What's good YouTube, your boy Musa back with another fitness video today. I'm gonna to be taking you guys through my push for workout. Changing program, I was on the chest and back, shoulders and arms, legs, rest, repeat. Changed it, exercises are pretty much the same. I know sometimes when you hear people say, I'm changing training program, you're thinking, oh, whole new exercises coming through and whatnot. No, it's just the rotation and the pairing of certain muscle groups that changes. Um, whereas push, you've got shoulders, you've got chest, you've got triceps pretty much being combined. You pull, you've got back, you've got biceps, you've got rear delts, you've got traps being involved in that. And obviously legs is legs, right? You might separate, you might do just quad day and then a hamstring day or you mix it. I still only train legs once a week, sometimes if I'm feeling good and I feel like I'm, I'm recovered um, and I'm not really suffering from as much cardio as I'm doing right now, which is like an hour and a half. <laughs> yes, 90 minutes of cardio is what your boy is on right now. Again, I have to say this in every video, obviously 90, 90 minutes of cardio is not something that everyone should do. It depends on how physical your day-to-day -day is, how active your day-to-day -day is. Mine is what you're seeing right now. I sit in this seat 95% of the day. The rest of the time I'm either in the gym or I'm going to the grocery store, or I've gone for a walk. That's it. That's the only times I'm actually moving the body, right? So an hour and a half of cardio um, is nice for me, and it's not much. Hour and a half out of my day to actually do some physical activity and move my body is not a lot when you think of the whole 24 hours, right? Most of you probably have nine to fives. If your nine to five is very aggressive and you're, you're working like, construction or you you have a standing job where you're moving left and right boom 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 getting things like ten thousand steps and your neat was going to be very high compared to someone like me who sits at a desk for most of the day right and plus i'm kite so i gotta push it a little bit normally if i just wanted to stay around a certain weight 30 minutes of cardio every day probably take the sunday off is more than enough but because i'm trying to push it that's why i'm on an hour and a half and I'm, I'm not gonna lie, I'm actually enjoying cardio because I'm doing things like I'm watching Lost right now. So that's a hack for you guys. If you are doing cardio, try and have a game that you probably enjoy that you can play on your phone or a tablet like I have here. Tablet or have a series. I watch two, sometimes two and a half episodes. Each episode is like 40 minutes. So 80 minutes two episodes it goes quick i'm not gonna lie to you guys it goes very fast especially if you're in the series like if you're all the way in invested in the show you you kind of forget that you're doing cardio i feel like that's the that's the benefits to having like a game you like you enjoy like candy crush or something My, right now for me is, is a game called royal match i enjoy that stuff um so time just goes by very fast you have those moments where you're like ah, i know i'm doing cardio this sucks and then you have moments where you just get all up in the show or all up in the game and then 10, 20 minutes goes by, you're like, oh, whoa. So yeah, that's a little hack for you guys. Have a game or a series that you enjoy or you've probably watched before, a new one, put that on your tablet or your phone. If you've got Netflix, if you've got HBO, if you've got Disney Plus, do that, I'm telling you, it, 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 it saves lives, man. <laughs> because just standing there, I'm, I'm not gonna lie to you, just listening to music does not help. Just listening to music and doing cardio is, is not it. <laughs> It's not it I'm, for me personally. It don't work for me. So yeah, um, let's start. Let's start with uh, the first exercise we have is a seated lateral raise. Now the reason why I do seated is because one, it limits the momentum you use when you're standing up, right? You use a little bit of, a little sometimes. And I'm trying to go really heavy. And I've used this machine when I was doing the shoulders and arms um, workout previously. And I love this machine. It's absolutely great. You feel it all up in your delts. And I did about two, three warm-up sets. Now, another thing is when you hear someone say, I only do two working sets, that's like their top set. That's the one that they actually track. Warm-up sets or drop sets, most people don't really track those, um, but it's still working out. It's still an exercise. It's still something, right? You know, it's, it's just, you can't just dismiss it. Warm up if you're doing two, three warm up sets, which I would recommend in order to avoid injury. Those things still count, but people don't count it as the working set. So you got to know the difference. When someone says, I'm only doing two working sets, best believe they've done two warm up sets 
and they've probably added like a drop set to the last one. So overall, they've done probably done like four, five sets in total, but they only counted the two. Again, you just do what works for you, right? If you want to count your warm up sets, count them for everything. If you don't want to count warm up sets, then just count the working sets and just stick with that. The key is just stick so you can understand where you're making progress and how to evolve and how to take it to that next level and make that progressive overload, right? Warm up sets is more like a feeling thing. Okay, I'm feeling kind of warm today. Joints are good. You know, I mean, I slept good. Energy is right. I only need two warm up sets today. Go for it. But in some days, hey, body cold, joints not really everything. You know what I mean? You might need that four or five. Sometimes even six warm up <laughs> Okay, if you need six warm up sets, that's crazy. <laughs> but sometimes you do need that little extra work just to get the body warm and get loose in order to really hit that top set. Uh, for me, the key is just trying to hit that 90 degree angle like this, boom, and then take it, take it from there. I did three working sets and the last one I did a drop set, drop the weight, boom, hit it again, dropped it again, hit it. So that's two extra sets after just to really exhaust my delts. But at the beginning of the workout is when you're strongest, so your weakest muscles, the ones that you really want to develop, like me, delts, you need to prioritize those. Do not be leaving that to the end of the workout where you're finished, you ain't got nothing left in the tank. It all make no sense. Beginning of the workout, that's when you should be putting your all into those exercises that you want to develop certain body parts. Of course, I'm not talking to beginners. Beginners need to develop the whole body. But if you're advanced and you've been training for five, six plus years, then yes, you've got weak points and you want to focus on those, make sure you prioritize them in your training programs, especially when you set it up, right? Me, delts is one. Second exercise, we've got the incline chest press. I like this machine. Some people don't. They find it a bit awkward, the positioning of it. Um, but again, as you can see, got to set it up first. Make sure the seating position's right. Um, the distance here, because sometimes because of the seat, you can either lift it up or push it down. I have a pretty short upper body, so therefore I need to push the seat up in order for me to be, uh, if it's too low, then I'm starting to hit like delts, my front delts and that. So I need to push the seat up in order for it to be in line with my upper chest in order for me to get that good angle and press. Again, always make sure you do that first. Some people just go into the machine without setting it up right, just chuck on the weight and just sit their ass down and just start. I'm like, what are you doing? everybody's different you know some people have small torso some people have longer you know what i mean longer legs and whatnot you've got to adjust the machine first and the best way to do that is maybe add a 10 or don't add no weight at all just test it out see okay that's how does that feel yeah, that's about right boom then you can start adding your 10s your 20s and stuff like that in order to do your working sets right um but whenever i change a body part i still do warm-up sets so i did delts first now i'm going to chest I'm gonna do one or two warm up sets just to really get the chest and blood, get the blood flowing and make sure everything is set up right so I don't get injured. I always do this, never mess around with that. And hence why I've been training for 15 plus years. I've never really had any injury that's kept me out for a long period. The most I probably left out of the gym is like two, two and a bit weeks when I had the vid or I was just ill or I traveled and there was no gym where I was traveling. That's about it. Other than that, I'm in the gym. I'm in the lab, putting in that work. Always make sure to tuck in your elbows. I'm not saying like tuck them in crazy like this. Just tuck them in slightly so you reduce the tension on the delts. You know, obviously some people are gifted and they can really f like flare out their, their, their delts and whatnot, their shoulders. But you want to tuck them in just slightly, as you can see here, what I'm doing, just slightly. You don't want to be out here. Out here is it's not, I want to say it's dangerous, but it's more injury prone. Like you're more likely to get injured when your arms are flared out. So try to tuck them in a bit, keep that chest up and then press, you know? Every time you do a chest exercise, just think tuck, tuck in elbows, tuck in elbows, safety, safety first. <laughs> Next up, we have the seated dip machine. Now I really enjoy this machine. I, I think this is probably the only gym that I've been to that has it. There's probably more out there, but it, it looks like a, a car. <laughs> That's what, that's what someone said in one of my videos. Like, it looks like you're, you're driving a car. And I was like, you know what? You got a point. It really does. So here, as you can see, I'm just trying to set it up, make sure everything's right, foot position. You know what I mean? 
the distance of the pressing. Make sure everything right before I start adding on weight. I don't play around with this ever when any exercise. <laughs> It's too many people I've been saying I'm going to repeat it again there's too many of you that just go into the gym and just chuck weights on machines and just start using it without setting it up right to your body type um you know what I mean longer limbs and stuff like that shorter limbs here that your seating position is not going to be the same as everyone and that's the great thing about this gym everything can be adjusted you know you have those machines where everything's just set in the way it is and you can't really change certain things Whereas here, you can change it a lot. So I'm just doing a warm-up set with 20s, point 20s on each side, just repping it out, get blood flowing, because I'm now training triceps, changing the muscle. Something I like to do, I like to go from shoulder, chest, tricep, and then go back to shoulder, chest, and then I might do another shoulder, and then finish off with like tricep pushdowns. Um, I like to do minimum of two exercises for each body part, minimum, right? You want With chest, I like to do an incline, then I like to do, even this, dip machine i am working my chest don't get it twisted your chest is being worked when you do a dip like this you can do body weight dips i like to do the machine um because i do this twice a week uh, actually no the second half of my workout is the traditional um chest uh, chest and back shoulders are shoulders by itself and then i train arms by itself so that's the second half of the week but today, let's focus on the push workout. So here, this is my first working set. I only did one warm up, and as you can see, it's heavy. That first rep, struggling. You want to have a bit of struggle. Just because you're cutting, does not mean you need to cut down on the weight. That's one thing I've done this cut, and I can see the size that I've kept, the muscle that I've kept, makes a big difference. Focusing on protein, making sure I'm still training heavy and really pushing myself has made a huge, huge difference. Like I've told you guys previously, when I've cut it, it's gone straight keto mode, low carb, not high enough protein, uh, moderate fat, and the weight's reduced as well because I'm feeling weak. I'm not, the energy's not really there. The carbs are not flowing in the body. You know what I'm saying? I'm not feeling full. I'm not feeling swell. I'm feeling flat. This year, making a difference, taking my time with it. As a, We started this cut, what, February? The beginning of February it is now October and I'm still going at it, still enjoying food, still eating what I want to eat, the pizzas, the burgers, the sushis, like I'm still eating it, but everything is very controlled and moderate. It's not like I'm doing it every day. It's like on a Saturday after I go to my brother's game, I might get me some sushi, you know, but I won't go crazy with the sushi, like 40, 50 rolls. No, I'm getting like 25, maybe 30. <laughs> Enjoy myself, just eating good. You know, but I make sure I pay my dues during the week, weekends as well, knock out that cardio, do my workouts, get sleep, not playing around with that either. So I'm making sure everything that I can control, which is the sleep, the food, uh, the workouts and stuff, I'm doing it. And then I let the rest just do its thing. Uh, if it's birthday events and stuff, I'm still going to go. I'm still going to eat the food, but I'm just going to be very mindful of what I'm putting in my body. Prioritize protein. Make sure I eat a good amount of protein before I even go to the birthday so I'm not as hungry. I'm not, I'm not as tempted to eat the cakes, the snacks and whatnot because I'm, I'm already full from all the protein that I've eaten during the day. Another hack for you guys. If you're going to birthdays and stuff, make sure you eat that good amount of protein before you go there so you feel full and you don't end up snacking like crazy. All right, next exercise, we've got the classic standing lateral raises. Just pumping out to the side. Boom, hit it. Boom, hit it. Boom, hit it. Just banging it out. You can't get enough of those, those side delts, man. <laughs> hey, spam them shits. I'm not, I'm not joking. My delts have come up a lot in the last two years, I would say, because I spam side delts. Front delts, as you guys can see, normally back in the day, seated shoulder press would have been the first exercise because... You know, everyone does seated shoulder presses, just that exercise. I'm just like, nah, bro. I'm spamming side delts and only side delts. That's what I'm focused on. And that's what I want to do right now. So I go pretty heavy. I'm using, I think, 18.5 kg on this bad boy. And just spamming them, bro. I think I did like five, maybe even six sets. Spam. I know you hear all that. Oh, you only need to do two sets. You only need to do three sets. I'm going off of how my body feeling, how my delts are feeling. If it's, if it's feeling nice after second set, 
brother, I'm doing another one. Why am I stopping? I'm feeling good, energy nice. I'm putting in that work. <laughs> Why am I here saying, so let's cut it short. Oh, two sets, you know, that's that's what science says. Fuck science. <laughs> my body is my science. My body's saying, so run it. Brother, we're feeling nice. Let's go. More. Give me more. So, all right, bang that three. Felt good. Bang that four. Feeling nice. I'm like, yeah. Let's go. Five. Boom. All right, you know, last one. Boom. Drop set that as well. Bam. Sets. <laughs> Reps, volume. <laughs> yes. Next up, we got a shoulder press at an angle. I love this angle. It's, you know, you don't go crazy heavy on this. I'm just got two, what, 220 plates on each side. And just as so you can see the controls, slowly press, slowly press. Yes, your front delts get worked when you're doing most push exercises, right? However, you still want to do front delts. Train your front delts. You know, one or two exercises is totally fine, but you want to, if it's front raises with dumbbells, do that. If you don't want to do the shoulder press, cool. But yeah, added it in, uh, prepped it out, had a good time, focused on form, contracting at the top to lower in now, nice and slowly, nice and controlled. And yeah, that was the shoulder press. Now we're onto the floors, the pec deck. As you can see, I'm adjusting it. I'm bringing it slightly behind the seat. So that way I'm already at a stretched position, right? As you can see here, look, chest up. You see, instantly I went, soon as I sat on it, boom. And now I'm trying to bring my elbows together. Really squeeze the chest, didn't waste time. I don't, junk volume when it comes to warm-up sets, I don't do that no more. Like three, four reps, I'm cool. I'm not trying to do that 12 rep waste energy. As you can see, I bumped up the weight instantly. Feel good, chest up. Boom, let's rip it out. Stretch, squeeze. Stretch. As you can see, I'm more, I'm more slow on the eccentric part of the movement than the concentric, like that. Stretch, slow, 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 slow. Press, slow, slow, slow. Press, really squeezing. And I, like I said, if you, if you ain't making faces when you're working out, are you really working hard enough? That's the question. Now I'm watching this back. I'm like, Musa, you could have, you could, you could have squeezed out at least three, four partials. You know, I could have three or four of those. I could, I could have. Yeah, I had it in the tank, but I, I didn't do it. <laughs> now I'm watching it over. I'm like, Yo, Musa, you could, you could have pushed a little bit more. You know, you could have. I think I did do it though in the next set. I only did two sets here for chest. Chest is a very dominant part of my physique, so therefore I don't go when it comes to chest. I only do like two sometimes three sets max. I never do four or five sets when it comes to chest. I just don't because chest is one of my most dominant parts. So yeah, that was the chest fly. Now we have the final exercise, which is the traditional tricep cable extension. You gotta push that shit down, triceps, boom. I know I can see it from my oversized uh, T-shirt, my protein T-shirt, I, I, I see the triceps working. They're not playing. I step out a bit, so already there I have a little bit of tension on the arms and just bring it straight down to your sides. Very simple exercise. But somehow you see a lot of people performing it wrong. You just wanna keep that tension and bring it up. If you can bring it up a little bit higher than a 90 degree angle, and then boom, straight down to your side. You know, keep it simple, it's effective. And that was it for the workout. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this commentary voiceover. Um, if you guys have any questions, let me know and I'll be trying to bring out more videos, more fitness videos for you guys. And yeah, man, we're still going. We're still pushing, trying to get down to that 100 kg. I'm hovering at 100 and 403. My body is being very stubborn right now, um, letting go of body fat. But again, I feel like I'm almost, I'm kind of like in a body recomposition type of phase because the scale is not going down, but I can see my body changing and holding on to a lot of muscle, right? I'm holding on to a lot of muscle this year. Uh, so I'm not too disappointed with the scale if it's not going down at the pace that I want it to, but ain't nobody making me do two, three hours of cardio, not doing it. So if, if the scale does not want to move, it's his problem. If he wants me to reduce my food, I can do that in some areas, you know what I mean? <laughs> Reduce some carbs here and there, you know? Um, but 
it's going well. I'm good. I'm in a good mood. I'm 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 energetic. You know what I mean? I'm getting good enough sleep. And I also didn't want this year, like the diet to affect my work. Because my work, it's my livelihood, right? It's what it's what pays the bills. And my work requires a lot of energy, bring good man vibes. So always being hungry, which I kinda am, but it's like my meal timing and all that kind of stuff is also very good. I'm only eating like two meals right now. It is currently 6 p.m. I still haven't eaten. And you can see the energy. I'm here. You know what I mean? Like I try to prolong that first meal as long as possible, right? As long as physically possible. If I get to the point where stomach starts talking to me, you hear it going, raw, 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 hello, feed me. Then yes, I eat. Um, but yeah, I mean, everything's good. I just didn't want it to affect my work. Um, me being like, hey. So just have to, again, you got to do what's best for you, right? If it works for you, it works for you. Not what works for you is going to work for everyone. But these videos, I just like to give you guys like certain exercises and stuff. If it's not in your program, maybe add it, try it out. You might enjoy it. Yeah, man, that's it. I'm out. Catch you in the next one. Love life, love life, love life. Peace.